So do you know how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square? That's what I'm going to teach you today. First of all, you have to understand what they're talking about when they say, what is the square, completing the square? So you start with the idea that there are these perfect square trinomials that exist. And they call this a perfect square trinomial because you can rewrite it to be this. You're looking at four perfect square trinomials. I am going to do something here and I want to see if you can come up with the pattern because as soon as you see the pattern, this idea of completing the square is going to be a lot easier. We're going to start with x squared plus 10x plus 25. 25 is 5 squared. 10 is 2 times 5. x squared plus 12x plus 36. 36 is 6 squared. 12 is 2 times 6. Looking at x squared plus 16x plus 64. 64 is 8 squared. 16 is 2 times 8. And for the last one, you probably see the pattern already. 10 squared is 100, and 20 is 2 times 10. So in these perfect square trinomials, there is a pattern. The last term will be a number squared, and the middle term will be that same number times 2. I'm going to do something in, in the next screen that's going to use that pattern, and I just want you to be able to understand it. Write x squared plus 8x plus 5 equals 0 in the form x plus p squared equals q. This is just a general general way of saying we want to write this as a perfect square trinomial that's equal to a constant. P is going to be a constant and Q is going to be a constant. But right now you're looking at this. This is not a perfect square trinomial. There is no number you can uh -oh. multiply times itself and come up with this 5 right here. So we engineer this to be what we want it to be. We kind of force it to happen. First step I want you to take is you are going to subtract the 5 from both sides. So we now have 8x squared plus 8x equals negative 5. Then you want to make room for a new number. 8x, no, x squared plus 8x plus something equals negative 5 plus the exact same thing. Well, what is that something? Well, this is where we're going to think about that pattern. Remember, the last number is a number squared, and the middle number is that same number times 2. So 8 has to be something times 2. Well, it is... Four. That means what goes in this spot is that 4 squared. So this will be 16. And since 16 is on this side of the equation, we have to add it to this side of the equation too. All right, so I pop back this screen to show you one more step. x squared plus 10x plus 25 turns out to be x plus 5 squared. x squared plus 12x plus 36 is x plus 6 squared. x squared plus 16x plus 64 is x plus 8 squared. Are you seeing this pattern now? All right, now if you saw that pattern, you recognize that this number is what's going to show up in this form. So that 4 is going to end up right here. Equals negative 5 plus 16 is 11. If you were to multiply x plus 4 times x plus 4, you would get x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now for this problem, I didn't want to solve it. I wanted to do just one step, which was rewrite it. For the rest of this video, I will be solving these quadratics using completing the square. Solve x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0 by completing the square. Just an abbreviation. I used it. I don't know if everybody's going to use it, but I don't want to write the words out every time. All right, so the first step is going to be to move this constant over to the other side so we have a space for a new number that we're going to add. So x squared plus 2x equals adding 3 to both sides equals 3. Now we're going to add the extra space. x squared plus 2x plus some number I don't know yet equals 3 plus that exact same number number. Now we need to figure out what the number is by using the middle term here as a clue. We know that 2 times that number is going to be what we're going to end up squaring. Whatever that number is, is we're going to square it. So that number is obviously 1. And so that'll be the number that we add here, which is 1 times 1, 1. And we have to add the exact same number to the other side. I know that that's going to be x plus 1 squared, and that's going to equal 4. 
Now we're going to take the square root of both sides, x plus 1. The square root of x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1, and the square root of 4 are the two numbers that if you square them, you will get a positive 4, and that is plus or minus 2. And now we solve. I know that x plus 1 equals a positive 2, or x plus 1 equals a negative 2. In this case, it's going to be x equals subtracting 1 from both sides is 1, and in this case, it's going to be subtracting 1 from both sides gives me a negative 3, and those are the two solutions. All right, let's do it again, and then I'm going to show you a couple of little wrinkles that come up, so when you see those in your homework or on your quiz or your test, you'll know what to do. All right, so the first step here is to move that 2 over to the other side. x squared minus 12x equals positive 2. Now leave a space. x squared minus 12x plus something is going to equal 2 plus the exact same thing. Now we have to do a little investigation here. This is the negative 12. It's not the 12, it's a negative 12. So you need to take a 2 times some number that is going to give you a negative 12. Well, that's negative 6. And then that negative 6 not just the 6, but the negative 6 is going to be squared. So the number that we're adding is 36 on both sides. Sit negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. So you need to be real careful here when there's a negative, because even if you put a positive 6 here, which would have been the error, you would have still put 36 on both sides. So it's going to feel like you're doing it right, but there's a sign mistake that's going to pop up in the next line. And that would be when you write out this part. It's going to be x minus 6 that gets squared, not plus, and that equals 2 plus 36, which is 38. Now, how are you going to catch this mistake? Is because whatever you put here that gets squared, when you multiply that back out again, needed to turn out to be x squared minus 12x plus 36. Once you have this written as a binomial squared, you're going to take the square root of both sides. This becomes x minus 6, and that becomes plus or minus the square root of 38 because 38 is not a perfect square, so it can't come down to an integer. If you can break that down by simplifying square roots, you need to do that too. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check up above. There's a link to my video on how to simplify square roots, but this one can't be simplified either, so we're going to leave it like that. So we know that x minus 6 equals a positive square root of 38, or x minus 6 equals a negative square root of 38. And from here, I'm just going to add 6 to both sides and write my answers out. So x equals 6. When you add this to both sides, you'll get a positive 6 plus the square root of 38, or x equals 6 minus the square root of 38. Another way you could have written this is from this line right here. You could have just moved this 6 over and wrote x equals positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 38. And that is also a correct way of writing these answers combined. This works only if the coefficient on that x squared term is 1. And just in case all your terms are mixed up, make sure you rewrite these so that you are in descending order, x squared first and then x and then the constant. All right, so the way you handle that is we're going to factor that 3 out, and then since this is an equation, we can divide both sides by 3. So watch me do it. 3 times x squared was the 3x squared, and then 3 times the 4x was the 12x, and that equals 27. Now to make that go away, I can do this because I'm using an equation. I can divide both sides by 3. If for some reason you're doing this skill, completing the square, and it's not in an equation form, you can't do this. You would just then complete the square on the inside here. I'll have to make another video about how to do that, but for right now we are solving using completing the square. So this will cancel, and that will become 9. So I have x squared plus 4x equals 27 divided by 3 is 9. Now that that's a little simpler, we can do the same process we were doing by completing the square, adding something to one side, adding the exact same thing to the other side. We know that 4 is 2 times 2, so this must be 2 squared, so that's going to be a 4. We have to add 4 to the other side. Rewrite this. Now remember, you're not going to use 4 inside here. You are going to use a positive 2. Square that, and that equals 9 plus 4 is 13. Take the square root of both 
both sides of your equation. x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 13. And our final answer, I'm going to just do it in one line rather than two, and you will be subtracting the two from both sides. So I end up with x equals negative 2 plus or minus the radical. It's not wrong if you did plus or minus 13 minus 2. That'll be counted correct as well, but it's just kind of a math grammar thing that we put in numbers first and the radicals after. The next little wrinkle that's going to come up when you use completing the square on certain quadratics is that the number that is in the middle, the coefficient on the x, is an odd number. And this is going to force you to work with fractions. This is how it's going to look. x squared plus 5x plus some number is going to equal 3 plus that same number. Think of a number that when you multiply it times 2 is going to equal 5, and that same number will get squared to go into this empty spot. Well, the only number that you can multiply times 2 to get a 5 is actually 5 halves. Just simple. Just take 5 and divide it by 2. And when you multiply that by 2, your denominators will cancel and you end up with the 5. Divide whatever this is by 2. That's what you've been doing all along. If it's a 4, we divided it by 2. So just because it's an odd number, you don't change the rule. You still divide it by 2. And so now you have 5 over 2 and you need to square that. Well, squaring a fraction is just multiplying it times itself. So 5 halves times 5 halves. 5 times 5 is 25, and 2 times 2 is 4. So the number we're adding on both sides looks a little crappy, but that's accurate. It's 25 over 4. Then we follow the same steps. We need to write something squared, and that's going to be x plus not the 25 over 4, but the number you got that you started to work with, which is 5 halves. And that equals, well, now we need to add the 3 to 25 4. So let's change 3 to 12 over 4, because 12 divided by 4 is 3 plus 25 over 4. x plus 5 halves squared equals 37 over 4. It's ugly, but it <laughs> deserves love. It's right. <laughs> And then you take the square root of both sides, the same process, following the same steps, and we get x plus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 37 over 4. Let's do a little work with that. When you're taking the square root of a fraction, it's the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time. The square root of 37 is square root of 37. That's not going to break down. But the square root of 4 is 2. x equals, I need to subtract 5 halves from both sides, negative 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2. You do have common denominators over there, so let's go one more. The common denominator is 2. The numerators then go on top, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37. That is your answer. Now from looking at that answer, if you're familiar with the quadratic formula, if you were asked to solve this quadratic in any way that you wanted to, the quadratic formula for this one would probably be the simpler way to do it. If you have an odd number here and you don't have to solve by completing the square, I would go right to the quadratic formula. If you'd like to see how that works with the quadratic formula in this problem, click the link up above and I'll also put a link at the end of this video. Hey, if you got some value out of this, it would help me out a lot if you would like and subscribe so this channel can grow on YouTube. Thank you.